It's been weird this year. I'm a resin printer channel primarily, and we've only had two resin printers released. So, hey, look, it's time to remind people of the roots of this channel becoming successful by talking about resin printers again. So here's the thing. Nobody knows how bad resin fumes are. Some say they're harmless. Others act like opening a bottle indoors is immediate chemical warfare. And the truth is probably somewhere between just don't drink it and slow motion death. I've been waiting for someone out there, a lot smarter than me, to properly break down the risks of resin curing and what exactly are in these liquids so I can just tell everyone, go and watch that video. But even now, five years into it, I'm yet to find a satisfying conclusion. So let's err on the side of caution and assume whatever these machines do give off probably isn't good for us. And like Raymond Cocteau once said, anything that isn't good for us is bad for us. Henceforth, illegal. Just Google him if you don't know who he is. Anyway, resin fumes, time to get rid of them. Here's a couple of ways to do that. Hi, I'm Ross, this is Fohammer Videos. And I shouldn't have to say that I'm not a resin material expert. I'm not a resin printer expert. I'm just a resin hobbyist like you. I just talk to a microphone and have a camera. And this video shouldn't be misconstrued as professional advice, but we do live in a world where coffee cups need to say caution hot. So here we are. But yeah, I don't know that this is 100% the safe approach, but it makes 99% sense to me at least. So right, new to resin, here's a TLDR. Curing resin gives off VOCs. Now VOCs aren't inherently bad, there are plenty of harmless ones, but let's be honest, we all doubt that that's what's in this stuff. And I did buy a VOC meter, and yes, I've seen people say it's inaccurate, but it's accurate enough to tell me whether there are more or fewer VOCs in the room at a given time. I don't need an accurate speedometer to tell me if my car is going faster or slower than it previously was. So this'll do. Now we've seen a few solutions for dealing with fumes, mostly in the form of carbon filters. Small ones that sit inside printers probably do an okay job because they constantly recirculate bad air. And Elegoo came out with the Mars Mate, which probably reads great in a sealed chamber where they tested it, but in reality, it gets one pass over a massive carbon block and anything not caught by that is pumped into your room. Well done Elegoo, 10 out of 10 for marketing. Now I know Hagears are working on something because they've told us so in their RS Turbo livestream, and I'm looking forward to seeing what their approach is considering they're the smart ones. But there is a more immediately and possibly better solution. Well, I think the best solution is getting these fumes out of the environment that you do your breathing in, unless you like inhaling mystery soup. So I picked up a couple of Amazon purchasers to help with that printer enclosures. So I guess this video is sponsored by Fohammer Videos. Check out Fohammer on YouTube if you want amusing maker product reviews with sexy footage and a special interest in resin printers for making little army men and pseudo plastic dollies. Right, enough of that. One of these enclosures was completely unbranded and cost 65 quid, and one from a brand called UPI for 70 at the time of purchase. And the idea behind these is simple. You put your printer in it, stick a hose out the window and turn it on. A fan runs and pushes the bad air outside. Now I also saw that Wambam have one and that's a brand worth checking out, but because the bottom of this is open rather than sealed, I just didn't bother to test it. It could be great, it could be a glorified tent. So let's take a look at these ones I did get. They both come in small boxes and you start by assembling the frame. Both have terrible instructions and oddly the more expensive UPI one had a plastic frame where the unbranded model was metal. Because why wouldn't it? These are built, you awkwardly pull the tight covers over to create a sealed box. Pop in your printer and zip up the lid. Now obviously zips and velcro do not a perfect seal make but that's also kind of handy. If you have a fan pumping air out, you also need a way to get fresh air in, or you're just creating a vacuum. But yeah, be aware, this isn't an airtight seal. And when picking an enclosure, trust me, this isn't an ad for either of these two specifically. Just go on Amazon and search for resin printer enclosure, or even hydroponics grow tent. But you can do me a favor for making this video and click my affiliate link in the description, which will take you to a search results page for exactly that. 
that. Anything you then buy will net me a commission at no cost to you, and I'll spend it on something dumb that in future I might make a video about. But yeah, get something the right size for your printer or printers, and ideally one where you can open the printer's lid, but to be honest, if you're using an enclosure, you might actually be better off removing the printer's lid entirely. You can do it easily on most up and over printers, and this will also give you better access. Plus, these enclosures have UV blocking windows anyway. And another benefit of these is you should also be able to put in a heater of some kind, like a reptile enclosure heater, which is self-regulating. And for all the talk of vat heaters, under screen heaters, chamber heaters, and stupid resin pumps, getting the whole environment to optical temperature and keeping it there is probably the most ideal solution. Again, I'll put a link in the description, just pick one that doesn't look dodgy and cheap. This is DIY, so safety and all that is on you. Now, coming back to these enclosures I bought, some things to watch out for. The UPI one was pretty disappointing, even though it was the more expensive, better looker from online images to the packaging itself because the unbranded one actually had the option for air extraction either side when the UPI one only had an outlet on the right. The unbranded one had a larger hole for the power inlet, but sealed it with Velcro, where the UPI one only has a rubber cable gland, which is always open. And the unbranded one had variable speed fan control, where UPI was just on or off. But UPI did have bigger, useless side pockets that you'll probably never use. All of these elements are rarely described in online listings, so those are some things I wanted to point out that you should watch out for. And you'll probably find yourself interrogating the posted images more than the product's description for an accurate assessment. Now, if you do like the look of this larger one, I'll post a direct link, but I doubt this is available globally, and trust me, you are better off shopping around to get the features you want, if you can even call them features, and looking for better prices depending on the size you need. And if venting out of a window is your only option, you can use an aircon window seal kit too. Again, links in the description. Just be aware that, you know, home security and all that. And also, resin printers never want to be used in direct sunlight, even through a window, because UV light cures resin. But yeah, for those of you with limited space to put a resin printer or who sensibly feel the need to be a bit safer in terms of fumes, I'd put one of these up there as a must-have accessory. Just be aware that post-curing resin also gives off VOCs too. But this sort of thing should help, at least until some brands start giving us some serious options to handle this properly. As for me, I already have a basic ventilation system installed in my workshop, but as I'm now dealing with more hazardous products like laser engravers, I'm gonna be upgrading the whole room with something called an MVHR system along with air conditioning, which will allow me to replace all of the air in my room three times an hour with fresh air from outside whilst retaining heat. And that is costing me more than I made selling all of my printers and stuff through John Pie. So for the people out there unhappy that I actually did that and sold those printers to make money, even though I thought I did it a fair way, I hope that it's some solace that I'm at least spending all of that money by directly upgrading the channel in a roundabout way. But my question is, would any of you want a video on that? It's literally gonna be a guy installing a big vent in my room, but I can try and make it fun, so let me know in the comments. But that's all I've got for today. Oh, I went a bit critical drinker there, sorry. I hope this was handy to some people. For me, it's something I can now refer people back to as a useful accessory video. If you do know more than me about resin composition, safety and the like, pop it down in the comments because that'll help inform me, other viewers and future content. Just please cite your sources. I can't do much with my uncle's cousin who works at LE Cubic says XYZ. But I wanna say thanks for watching and thanks to our members for supporting the channel and they're on screen now please consider joining them to help me out and get the same benefits such as, well, being on the screen, early access, exclusive videos, and Discord roles. Until next time, 69 dudes, Fohammer out. You ain't ever gonna buy my heart out.